Mm-hmm. And then we were kind of playing catch up, but pretty well established program. Um, you know, Doug and Trent have put together a good team. When you look at their team, I'd say it's a big, long, physical team. Yeah. And they have some explosive players on both sides of the ball. Really, where the most changes have taken place is defensively hired Ryan Nielsen, who was a coordinator in Atlanta, who we saw last year as a part of their staff, and they played us pretty tough there defensively last year. So between Nielsen and uh, Chris Richard, um, who they work together in New Orleans, so there's some continuity yep. amongst the defensive staff. But everything starts with the front. They talked about it. You watch them play, and that's where it starts. I mean, two bookends on the edge, I think, combined. They had 27 and change sacks last year, so – Really productive players. Hines Allen is as good of an edge rusher as in the league, and he has it. He's skilled, and he plays with a very high motor. So him and Walker on the edges, and then inside you have a bunch of big bodies in there. They signed Armstead after he was released there by San Francisco. Trent actually was involved in drafting him back in San Francisco. Yep. So and Robertson Harris, who's big, long Hamilton, who didn't he was in and out last year. So. Big, strong front. The two linebackers are as productive as any two in the league. Olakon led the league in tackles or is among the league leaders in tackles. Tough, fast, instinctive. And Lloyd is just continually to get better over the course of the season. Where they really had the most changes in the secondary. When you look at their secondary, who we played against last year, like right. a lot of those guys aren't even here. Really, the main holdover um, is Cisco, mm-hmm. right? So Cisco comes back, good young player. Signed Savage in for agency. He was in Green Bay. He's really playing a nickel. Antonio Johnson, a Texas A&M kid, is kind of was a third safety. He's kind of moved into the starting safety role. Now Campbell got hurt there a week or two ago, but really good corner. So between Monteric Brown and then Darby. So Darby was in Baltimore last year. Signed Darby in for agency. They've had some other injuries take place here. We'll see kind of how they came out uh, the game last night. But defensively, they're big, they're long, they're explosive, and they put a lot of stress on you um, with the front. And offensively, the, the skill group, for the most part, is intact. Um, Trevor signed the extension in the offseason. A, a key part of their offense, who hadn't played the last couple of games, is Ingram. So yeah. mm. if he plays, he's obviously going to be a focal point. Right. I mean, he had almost 100 catches last year. He was a highly targeted player. Mm. You know, two good backs, uh, ETN and Bigsby. ETN's a very versatile back. Uh, made a couple of changes on the offensive line. Uh, signed Morrison for agency, who's in Buffalo, who's in Kansas City prior to that. Ezra Cleveland, who they actually traded for midseason last year, is kind of a backup rotational mm-hmm. player, inserted him into the lineup. So good offensive line, signed Duvernay to give him some flexibility as a returner, offensive player, good with the ball in his hand, drafted Brian Thomas, who's big and fast and explosive from LSU, and added Gabe Davis, who's been a consistently productive player. So they're a talented team. So their record is what their record is. Our expectation is that they're going to come in here and be ready to play. A good coaching staff, you know, well coached in the kicking game as well. Heath Farwell, so we understand the challenges that are in front of us. We just have to do a good job with our preparation here this week, getting ready to play against a good Jacksonville team. With Trevor, I know it's not.